Welcome. In this video, we shall be discussing Spring Boot interview questions. Let's see a list of questions which we shall be covering in this part. What is Spring Boot? What are services? The basics of creating a REST service with Spring Boot. Some of the patterns which are there, dependency injection, IOC, repository, what they mean, application property files and the beans and the type of beans. The annotations which we see in Spring Boot, like the component, controller, REST controller, Spring Boot application annotation, what these annotations mean. What is convention over configuration? What is Lombok pa package? What is a command line runner? And what are Maven and Gradle? With these topics, let's get started. So what are microservices? Microservice is an architectural and organizational approach. It's an approach in which the software is composed of small independent services which communicate over well-defined APIs. So instead of creating a monolith application where everything is bundled together, what we do is independent functionalities which we, uh, we uh, divide them based on responsibility. Single responsibility principle is what we use and whereby every single responsibility is given to a separate microservice. So in case we bundle the whole functionality into one big monolith application, there are multiple problems which may, which may come. It's a single, if, if any single functionality fails, the entire application shall be down because it crashes as a bundle. It is not an independent service. If you have to scale a specific part, you have to scale the entire application. Independent scaling is not possible. If you have to fix something, you have to fix it in the monolith and thereby you have to test the entire monolith. So all these problems are there with a the monolith application and thereby we independently divide this monolith into multiple services which are also called microservices and then we have these two major benefits. One is autonomous. Each service is, uh, each microservice can be developed, deployed, operated and scaled without affecting the functionalities of other services. So what it means is that if you have to do a service development, you can give to one team, the other service you can give to another team. So both the services can be ind independently developed. You can deploy it somewhere. One service you can deploy at one place in one of the pods. Another service you can deploy in another uh, node, another machine or a pod or whatever terminology you want to use, but these can be independently deployed also. There is no need of these two microservices to be deployed in the same application or the same hosting platform. You can do operations on these services independently and you can scale. Let's say this specific service is too much in use. You can have a scale factor of three, wherein three instances of this service would be running, thereby multiple applica application requests which are coming, multiple API requests which are coming can be handled without having any latency because we have scaled it. Uh, any communication between individual components in a microservice happen over well-defined APIs. Specialized, this is another characteristic of a microservice. Each service is designed for a set of capabilities and focuses on solving a specific problem. Okay, so which means the service should be broken if it caters to multiple uh, things. If it becomes complex, we have to ideally aim for a single responsibility in a service whereby service is responsible for achieving a single functionality. So one of the example of segregation of complex functionality into services is indicated here. This is a customer. He is requesting to add item to the cart. So multiple services are involved here. The request first goes to the API gateway. From there, it goes to shopping cart microservice. Shopping cart microservice may refer to product catalog service to search for the specific product. It would be uh, updating the shopping cart store. So this service is having a single database. That is what is indicated here. This is updating its own database. Then there may be recommendations for the customer. Those recommendations shall come from a different independent service, which is a recommendation microservice, which is again leveraging its own data store. Shopper tracking, like what exactly was a uh, pattern, usage pattern of the shopper that can be tracked using another uh, microservice. 
and price calculation can be done by another microservice so thereby it is divided into multiple different services uh, and then you have all those benefits where you can develop you can scale you can deploy you can test these services independently now what is spring boot spring boot is a open source framework for building java based production grade and stand alone spring applications it is typically used for making microservices and what are the different components which are there in the spring uh, microservice they are indicated here okay at a high level these are the components which are there so client side application would be making a call to a microservice microservice shall be having a controller shall be having some business logic which would be inside services shall be having models which would get the information from the database and also update the database so these are the three layers which would be there in spring boot microservice we shall see it in detail in a bit so how shall you create a rest service in spring boot so first thing which we do is we use spring initializer and create a base application so what shall it contain it shall contain the structure of the project and it shall also contain the dependencies so you will be uh, using the spring boot initializer to create a base project setup post that you shall be defining the configurations in the application dot properties or application dot json based on the style which you want to use then the core code so in the core of the microservice you shall be interacting with the database so for that you will be creating entity classes which are the representation of database tables so you shall be creating entity classes you shall be creating repositories repository is meant to facilitate the crude operations create retrieve update delete operations and other kind of queries in the database then you shall be creating a rest controller this rest controller is the interface the first point where the service uh, interaction happens and then you shall be running and testing the service so these are the different things which we shall have to do if in case we have to create a microservice in spring boot what is repository in spring boot in java spring boot a repository refers to a mechanism provided by spring data so this is provided by spring data for interacting with the database a repository is a abstraction over data access layer so what it does is it helps you to uh, interact with your database and simplifies the way developers interact with database by providing a high level methods for common database operations what are the steps when we have to interact with the database we have to define an entity and entity represents a table in the database so this is the first step which we have to do and add entity is the annotation which we shall be using then we define a repository a repository interface is created by extending one of the spring data repository interfaces like jpa repository this interface declares methods for common data database operations like create update create read update delete then once we have this repository created we have all the functionalities available for our use to interact with the database so then in the service we would do auto wiring of this repository what exactly is uh, dependency injection and how auto wiring works would come in a bit but we use this repository in our service class or our controller class the recommendation is to create it inside the service class because all the business logic should be inside the service class so inside the service class you shall be using this repository to do the functionalities which you intend to do with the database what are the functionalities so in the repository you can have the create read update delete methods indicated here you can define your own custom queries you can have a add query annotation uh, like this to define a custom query and you can have delete methods typically these are the things which are used uh, in the repository for interacting with the database what is dependency injection dependency injection defined for a 5 year old by john so he says that when you go and uh, open the refrigerator you can get into issues you might leave the door open you might get something which you should not be eating you might be looking for something which is basically expired which should not be eaten so all these problems can come if in case you are accessing the refrigerator yourself what you should be 
doing instead in a in a dependency injection way of thing is that you just say that i need something to drink with lunch and uh, that dependency that whatever should be made available to drink with lunch would be available to you that is what is a dependency injection wherein the thing the dependent thing is automatically injected for use before the dependency injection was in practice the common practice of getting objects was to use the new wherein we were instantiating the new inside the class where we intend to use that object we were instantiating the object so that is what was done by the new keyword so now what has happened is that dependency creation dependency life cycle maintenance is on the client itself and that's where the problem is instead in the dependency injection way of doing things is that the dependency is automatically injected for the client to use so what happens in spring boot is that the dependencies are automatically injected so we have this auto wired here and auto wired is not a mandatory annotation but if in case it is auto wired the dependency uh, would be automatically injected you don't have to create this repository this repository is already created for you how and where it is created we shall see in a bit but this dependency is automatically created for you and it gets injected for you to use uh, this specific dependency in your client application which is this service the dependency is automatically injected where it is created and how it is created and what is the life cycle of the uh, specific object is defined by some configurations which we shall see in a bit but the responsibility of creation has been taken care by somebody else that is what is dependency injection so ioc container is the one which provides the way to manage the life cycle of objects in an application it is responsible for creating configuring managing the objects based on configuration metadata and this is the one which is responsible for the objects which are injected during the dependency injection so we have a ioc container which is responsible for creating configuring and managing the objects based on some configuration the ioc container inverts the control of managing objects so why it is called inversion of control because it is inverting the control of managing object from application code to the framework so in the past way of doing the things was that the client was responsible for creating the object and also for managing the object wherein the life cycle of the object the deletion of the object everything was the responsibility of the client now what happens is that the ioc container takes that responsibility it inverts the control of managing object from application code to the framework promoting loose coupling and making the application more modular and easier to maintain dependency injection we have already seen let's read one more time is a design pattern that is facilitated by ioc container so di is facilitated by ioc container the responsibility of creating objects is in ioc and thereby they can be injected into client application it is a way of providing the necessary dependencies to a class rather than the class creating managing its own dependencies in di the dependencies of a class are injected into it by an external entity typically the ioc container so who is injecting those uh, objects the ioc container is inserting or injecting those uh, specific objects this promotes a high level of abstraction and flexibility in application design uh, so ioc container is a broader concept related to overall management of beans and their life cycle dependency injection is a specific technique within ioc the ioc container is responsible for implementing di by providing and managing the dependencies of the objects so they both go hand in hand ioc is responsible for the object management and di is the thing where the objects are automatically wired in the client code automatically so what are these application properties which are their application dot properties or application dot yaml in a spring boot application so these files are the central configuration file where developers can specify various settings for their project these configurations uh, play a crucial role in customizing the behavior of the application without requiring changes to the source code so because you are putting the values in the configuration instead of putting it inside your code you can change these configuration files and thereby when you restart your application you don't have to change the source code you just change the configuration file all the changes will take effect 
and the choice whether you want to use the application dot properties or application dot yaml file depends on the preferred format the yaml file is more preferred nowadays but it is your own personal preference if you prefer a properties files you can use that as well so we are indicating here a properties file where the spring data source url is indicated you have the username the password the port all these things are indicated if you want to change the port from 8080 to 9090 you can just change the configuration file and you can restart the application the change would automatically take effect so we just discussed uh, the ioc and we discussed that how the ioc inversion of control manages the objects so which objects they manage those objects which are managed are annotated with the at @bean annotation so at @bean refers to an object that is managed by the spring ioc container the ioc container is responsible for instantiating configuring and managing these objects throughout their life cycle the term bean is a concept in spring framework that denotes an java object when you annotate a method with at @bean it tells the spring container that the method will return an object that should be registered as a bean in the spring application context and beans are objects managed by spring ioc container so important thing on all this description is that when you have to manage an object within the ioc that object should be annotated with a at @bean annotation so there are different scopes which can be possible for the bean uh the first one the default one is the singleton this is the default scope uh singleton means a single instance of the bean would be there and it will shall be shared across the entire application context prototype is the second scope a new instance of the bean is created each time it is requested the scope is suitable for stateful beans which means that there is a state within the bean and thereby you want to have different bean created for a different state which would be there for that bean state is like the kind of properties which are there in the bean so if there are different uh, data types in our bean they would be having different values so the state is the current value of that specific property within the bean for the stateful beans a prototype can be the scope which can be chosen request a new instance of bean is created for each http request this scope is applicable in web application context and how can you do a scope you can do like this so you can say web application context dot scope request so what is a component annotation when a class is annotated as at component it is automatically discovered and registered as a bean in the spring application context so which means that a spring ioc container will create an instance of the class and manage its life cycle including initialization and destruction so what shall happen in this example is when this is annotated with at component when the spring boot application will start the ioc container will detect this annotation this annotation will be de detected and it will automatically register an instance of my component as a bean and then you can inject this specific my component into other spring managed components and there are specific this add component is a generic uh, annotation and it can be used as a base annotation for more specific add service add repository and add controller annotation which we are going to see in a bit add service is a specialization of add component and like we said earlier the service is created for providing the business logic to the application it is more specific than add component and is intended to be used for service layer components like add service add repository is specialization of a component this means that the class annotated with add repository is also automatically detected okay this is important it is also automatically detected and registered as a spring bean during component scanning and this add repository is intended for data access objects when we have to interact with the data base we had already seen that in the in the previous section the add controller annotation in spring is used to mark a class as a mvc controller controllers handle the incoming http request and they are the ones which will process them which means they will use the service uh, classes and they will use the data classes the repositories and prepare appropriate response and they shall be responding they are responsible for both accepting the request as well as preparing the response and sending the response back and uh, in the add controller we shall be having request mapping 
which will show how exactly the API signature looks like, how the request is mapped. And we shall also be having the HTTP verbs defined, for example, get, post, delete, so those kind of things. So here in this controller, when the say controller is being invoked like a get, it will return hello. REST controller annotation is a specialized version of add controller annotation and it combines two annotations. One is add controller and the second one is add response body. This annotation would be used if in case you are creating a microservice. So it is commonly used in scenarios where the primary purpose is to expose data over HTTP in a RESTful manner. It is convenient choice for building APIs where emphasis is on data representation rather than rendering HTML views. In the previous, the add controller, the response body was not mandated. It could be a HTML file also. But here what happens is that we are putting emphasis on the data representation rather than on the HTML views. And these methods return the data directly and are automatically serialized into JSON for the response body. So what would happen is whatever return value is there, it would be a JSON file which shall be automatically created for you and why because we have a annotation called add response body which is automatically combined within the add rest controller so it would be same like controller meaning when the http request comes to the service it will be handled by rest controller and the only thing is when it will reply it will reply rather than a http view it will be replying a json data value